All right. All right. So, guys, what we're looking at here is solubility of CO2 in pure water, 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere pressure. 0.1 atmosphere pressure is 0 0.0037 molarity. And the common practice is to assume that all of the dissolved CO2 is in the form of carbonic acid, which is produced by the reaction between CO2 and water. Hopefully that you would be able to okay, put that together and that would be the equation of CO2 reacting with water to form that carbonic acid. Namoa, right? Non-metal oxide plus water gives me a acid. Okay. So the question's asking us, what is the pH of a 0 0.0037 molar solution of carbonic acid? The other thing that I'm going to ask is, what is the concentration of the carbonate ion as well? If you were to look at your... Reference sheets that have K8 on them. You know which one I'm talking about? That one? Right. The one for brown and the that has K8. The reason why I gave you this is because it has the inorganic acids on it. Carbonic acid, mono proto, mono di triprotic, which one is it? Yeah. Huh? Music. Sure. Carbonic acid. Is it a monoprotic acid, a diprotic acid, or a triprotic acid? Di, because it has how many hydrogens? Two. two. Okay, two acidic hydrogens that can come off. If you look on the aqueous equilibrium constants for your age, if you look at carbonic acid, actually, if you look at this chart, everything's got a Ka1, right? And I got things with a Ka2 and there's a Ka3. What? Why? F1. Beautiful. It's for the loss of hydrogens. And really, when we think about a diprotic weak acid, we are actually having two equilibrium, um, I don't know if I want to call them states, reactions, okay, two equilibrium systems. The first one, we would have carbonic acid plus water. Oops, make that an equilibrium arrow with the hydrogen carbonate ion and the hydronium ion. And you can think of these really happening in two discrete time frames. This one happens first. Then what's going to happen? Is this, this is an acid, right? Actually, it's, what do you call that? Can it act like an acid and a base? So what do you call those things? Amphoteric, okay. In this case, we're talking about a Ka2. This is the equation for your Ka1. One ionization of the one hydrogen. Your Ka2, then, would cover this. acting as a weak acid to form this and the hydronium ion. Questions at all? Yeah. The yeah. top one should be one. The oh, yes, it should. I'm just going to do this because otherwise it will erase a whole bunch. One minus. Thanks, Alex. All right. Now, the first part asks us for the, the pH of that solution. Anybody remember? Question, I'll make another mistake. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Does it look like a one now? Thank you. Yeah, it does one. Sorry. I, CO3, I just automatically put a two, but it's not. All right, so. 
You guys remember anything about a Ka1, Ka2 calculating pH of a solution for diprotic? Um, yeah. Isn't it that there's more than one hydrogen, like H2SO4 or something? There will be a Ka1 for the original H and then a Ka2 for the second H. Uh-huh. But when you're calculating the pH of that solution, is there anything that, that like, what is the pH primarily going to be yeah. due to? If the difference between the first and the second is greater than 10 to the third, I think it is, then mm -hmm. it's only just the first one. Good. Okay, if the K, difference between the Ka1 and the Ka2 is greater than 10 to the third, your pH is really due just to that first ionization process. Okay, meaning this equilibrium is going to lie, the second equilibrium is going to lie so far to the left that this production in this second equilibrium isn't going to produce a whole lot of hydronium that it's going to affect the pH to any great degree. Amanda. Sure. Well, it's just a rule of thumb. If this, uh, the first equilibrium here is going to be your Ka1. The second one is your Ka2. Both of them produce the hydronium ion, which would contribute to the pH. If the Ka2 for this equilibrium is 10 to the third less than this one, this first one accounts for, for the hydronium that's going to affect the pH. The other one would be so small it gets lost in how much this one produces. Okay. So K1 is always going to be greater than K2. Okay, yes. Yes. Because your first ionization is always larger than your second. So and you mean by a factor of 10 to the third? Yes, a factor of okay. 10 to the third. Yes. And so, I don't know if you would call it an intermediate, but uh, that, like, the H2CO3 going to HCO3, is that HCO3 now amphitheric? Yes, HCO3 is amphitheric, yes. Okay. So, so how? Huh? 10 to the third. Like, like if your Ka is, is something times 10 to the negative 2, and your Ka2 is something times 10 to the negative 4th, your pH is going to be due to the first equilibrium. But what? isn't that not by a factor of 10 to the third? Yeah. Didn't that just 10 to the second difference? Did I say negative 2 and that negative 4? Yeah. All right. Back up. Say the first one is something times 10 to the negative 2, and then the Ka2 is something times 10 to the negative 11. Then it's only due to the first. Okay. Wait, what about Sorry. 2 and 5? Is that, is that good or is Usually, it Usually, yes. Then that should be fine. Then you have to do both. And that's what we're going to look at anyway because I asked you to find the concentration of the carbonate ion. All right. So, what do I need to set up here? Oh, I just need an ice table, right? Just a little ice table? Yeah. Ice. Because I'm going to do this first ice table, I'm going to calculate the concentration of this and the con concentration of the hydronium, right? The hydrogen carbonate ion and the hydronium. All right, so what's my initial condition? What are my initial conditions? Mm -hmm. 0.0037 for the hydrogen carbonate. I'm sorry, for the carbonic acid. Water's not going to enter into my equilibrium expression at all. Do I have any hydrogen carbonate ion to begin with? No, we assume we don't. We don't. We assume we don't have any hydronium. Which way is this equilibrium going to shift then? To the right. It's going to make some product. So this is minus x plus x plus x. So this would be 0 0.0037 minus x, x, and x. What's my Ka1 for carbonic? Ka1 is equal to 4.3 times 10 to the negative, oops. Can you read that? See, that's wrong. 
So what does that tell you about this x compared to 0 0.003? Small. Pretty small, so we can say that this is really going to be 0.0037. Right. Expression for k is the expression for k. Right. Okay. 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 Okay
What are they going to do when you take? You're allowed to use it for IV tests. Do they clear the memory? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Because when they give us all the data we need, so I don't know if we need. I don't know if they do or not. Oh, like oh, why would Mrs. Ludin tell us to use polyspell? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, and the rules for math might be different than chem, because the rules for physics are different than they are for chem, too. I don't know. Yeah. Becky. The, all the app does is find roots. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's a little more about it. Oh, uh, was that somebody's computer? Okay. Yeah, I, I thought somebody's. Yeah. Thing. All right. So, I can calculate pH now, right? No. Sure. Oh well, yeah. I'm, I'm greater than a ten to the third. But you can't figure out. Like, I cannot figure out CO three to negative two, right? I don't know the concentration of the carbonate ion yet, do I? No. No. So what do I need to do? I need to look at that second equilibrium for the system. Water doesn't enter into it. What are my starting conditions for this equilibrium? What are my starting conditions for this equilibrium? Eric? Where am I? Which one? Okay, where does it go? For who? For what? For this one? Oh, okay. Does it go anywhere else? Shouldn't we go on the other side? Definitely, right? Should go for the hydronium as well. Do I have any carbonate initially? No. No. Oh, jeez. Thank you. Which way is the equilibrium going to shift then? Because I have hydronium there. Why is this still going to shift to the right? Good, because I don't have carbonate yet, so it is going to shift. X plus X plus X. 4.0 times 10 to the negative 6 minus X. X. Yes, because this is the Ka2 equation. The second equilibrium thing for that second hydrogen is the Ka2. If I had something like H3PO4, I have three Ka's. Okay. No, 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 it's good. Oh. I'm doing the second one actually to find the concentration of the CO3. Yeah, the carbonate ion. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think I can make an assumption about here? It's really tiny. That X is very small compared to the 4.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. What about here? Same thing. Makes the math pretty easy, right? Because then X is really just equal to your Ka2. Right. If you, you want to see that, can I move this? Up? You have to extend the edge at the, in the middle on the bottom. Oh, that. Thank you. It's been a long time since I've used this. All right. So KB is equal to the concentration of CO3. Times the hydronium over. Sorry, is this KA2? Yeah, is this KA2? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Would KB be HCO3 going back to H2CO3? Okay, don't, let's not. No, KB that would be, be CO3 negative 2 plus water going to HCO3 plus the hydroxide. 
So wait, if HCO3 went back to H2CO3, that wouldn't be considered K-base. Not, the reverse one is not K-base. Yeah, but it's HCO3, the conjugate base to h 2 So it'd be, but it would be this in water. Okay. All right, so, so this equals X. No. Times 4.0 times 10 to the negative 5 over 4.0 times 10 to the negative 5. Those cancel. X is just equal to the Ka2. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Sure. Technically, your concentration of your hydronium ion is going to be the concentration you found after the first ionization, which is that 4.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. It is actually technically that plus your Ka2, which is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11th, right? <laughs> You got to say that next page. Man's age. I heard you can't command Z of that. Yeah, command Z. Say command Z. No, it's right there. Just say command Z. Why? Why? Why does it bother? Why? I don't know. Say command Z. It'll undo it. I don't want to scream command Z. Is that arrow? There you go. Yeah, it's just command Z. Man's age. Right. Right. This is very, very small compared to this, right? All right, so the pH is really the negative the log of 4.0 times 10 to the negative 5. Concentration of your CO3 minus 2 is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 11 molar. This should be molar. Right? Good. We, we have to go to all the trouble of finding like the second K2 and all those values too, but the IV just want us to add 5.6 to the other one. Just for like good practice. Let me answer what I. You got to show it to me. Yeah, like, what do you mean to show it? Like, show that 5.6 times the negative one is so tiny? Oh, no, if, if you're greater, if you're talking, if I'm just asking for pH, yeah. if you just say the Ka's differ by more than 10 to the third, so pH only due to the first ionization, that's fine. Okay? If I asked you for the concentration of the CO3 minus 2, you should have done a lot more. Right? Questions on that? Yes, Lauren. How did you go from like adding the 4.0 times 10 to the negative 4 plus 5.6 times 10 to the 11th? And then because the 5.6 times to get to here? Yes. Because this is so small compared to that. What's pH equal? I didn't do the math. Oh, did I? No, 4.4? Four four? Yeah. It's like yeah. times 10 to the 11th. Negative 11. Oh, oh. It's 4 point lower zero. Now it makes sense? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We good? All right. I want to go. I want to go to my next problem. Um, I don't use this very much at all. So now let's take a look at 1616. Solution made by adding solid sodium hypochlorite, which is NaClO, to enough water to make 2 